Yo, what's up? We hit 50K, it's crazy. I wanted to make you a video specifically about the road to get to 50K and what it looked like for me and maybe what it might look like for you. Hey, what's up? I'm Chris from flyride.com. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time and you wanna learn all about custom lighting, like what parts I use, how I install them, and why I use those parts to begin with, start now by subscribing to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell notification icon. And I'm serious, like actually hit the bell notification icon and hit the thing that says that you wanna get notifications because then you won't miss any episodes and it'll be dope. All right, let's get back into it. So I mean, first off, I'm stoked, I'm humbled that so many people have been watching the videos, reaching out, talking with me, letting me know what they're getting out of it, kind of giving me their specific story. That has been super awesome. And I've been crazy impressed by you. People that are sending me videos showing me like, hey, check out this G35 I just did, or check out this truck that I just did, or whatever it might be, I'm seeing these videos and pictures and hearing these stories all from you, so thank you so much. Like, it's crazy to see the impact of my work on other people and then them being grateful to me. I'm grateful to you. So in this video, I am excited about a lot of upcoming things, things I'm, I'm pumped about because I know the change, I know the value that it's gonna have. At least I think I do. I've learned a lot along the way about, I think it's gonna do one thing and it does something else. We're gonna do three things in this video and the next is just gonna be me talking about how excited I am about upcoming things. And then after that, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the journey and just I'm gonna get real. I'm gonna probably pop some bubbles and <laughs> hopefully I don't crush any hopes and dreams or anything, but I am gonna go into what it's looked like for me to go from zero to 50K and how long that took. And the third thing is the contest we have coming up. We've got Circuit Demon, Dress Up Bolts, and something from the Academy. So stay tuned, more details on that in a bit. But I wanna highlight a couple guys. Uh, you have reached out, you've sent me videos. One of them is a guy that's always in my live streams, Sinister, Jay from Sinister Retro Works. I love seeing his progression and his work. He's amazing. Like. I feel dumb half the time showing my work when I see his work and he's just crushing it and doing such an amazing job. Even his pictures are pretty, it's crazy. So definitely go follow Jay if you haven't already. He's one of the main guys that's always around on the live streams. So if you wanna learn from another guy, aside from myself that's in my community, learn from Jay. He does crazy lens etching if you need that for any of your custom jobs or anything. He got me a dope shirt recently. I'll just put that on here real quick. And another guy is Tom. He's actually one of the original gangster lightsmen. He's one of the first people that took me up on the offer to get involved with my online course before it was even started, before it even existed. Part of his money that paid for his membership and his being part of that OG group is what enabled me to pay for Kajabi, which is the software that I use, and it's amazing. It's the dopest software and it's not super cheap. So I had to spend a lot of money up front to even be able to start putting the course together so people like Tom have played a huge role and check out his work. It's pretty freaking amazing too. And last, check out my guy that just hit me up about his G37 the other day. I mean, he just sent this video and I think yesterday and I think it's a great example. If I get hit up on Facebook, someone's like, yo, check out my car, I couldn't have done it without you, thanks bro. Like that makes me feel amazing. Even the little things like where I can tell he mounted the demon eyes and how it looks and how it's shining and doing all that stuff. I get pumped when I see people are actually taking my advice and doing the installs with that guidance and then showing me what it looks like at the end. It's the best. All right, I hope you're comfy. I hope you're uh, sitting in a nice little chair and you're laid back. You've got your big tobacco wooden pipe and nice comfy blanket, fireplace roar, and everything's just comfy and you're ready for story time. Because my friends, it is story time. I'm gonna take you back to where Flyride came from. I'm gonna step very quickly up until I started doing YouTube and knew that I was actually doing YouTube. And then I'm gonna break down the benchmarks of when I hit 10K, 20, 30, 40, and now 50K, and what it looks like and where I was at, maybe mentally and planning wise and the business itself. I want you to actually see behind the curtain and understand what it is because I'm willing to bet a lot of you have no clue what it's been like or what it's taken or what it even looks like right now at 50K. So I'm gonna chop it all up for you and I hope you're ready for story time. So the reality is Flyride totally started in a garage. The typical story of like tinkering and messing around with stuff before it was a business, before I had any idea that it was even gonna be called Flyride one day, I was messing around in my parents' garage, learning all about car stuff and people started asking me to make them products. So in those days, I was just 
recording video just to show them how to do things so that they could buy it. And in the traditional fly ride fashion, what I wanted to do when I first fell in love with cars, when I first started learning about it, was I wanted to take my little Hyundai Tiburon and I wanted to put a cold air intake in there. But unfortunately, I had this big clunky automatic transmission that was messing up. Naturally, I thought, well, let's just do the easiest thing possible and change the car from an automatic to a manual, take out that big clunky thing, stick in the five speed and I don't know, then the intake would fit and I'd be a cool kid with that nice little AEM cold air intake. And like everything else in the business, it took forever. I learned a crazy amount, I failed a whole lot, but a few months later I had this five speed, 10,000 mile motor in the car. I was pumped about it, it looked good, it ran well. I didn't know how to drive yet. I didn't know how to shift or you know use a five speed yet, but I had the car, it was working, it was, it was dope. So I started documenting things back then and I think that's where my love for sharing all this stuff out with other people came from because in that documenting process, I had some dudes roll out, they helped me do that swap, they showed me a bunch of stuff, not because I paid them, not because we knew each other, but because they saw that I was taking on this big job and they just wanted to help. And that has stuck with me ever since then. Like I said, that's 2003. So if you fast forward 16 years, I'm still taking that torch that they had and passing it along and trying to get you guys to do the same thing. So if you're watching this and you're thinking like you can learn some tips, my best advice from you is take whatever tips you learn from me and teach them to somebody else. They're gonna help you crazy if you're doing that. So about a year after I got really down with the car and did the whole manual transmission swap and all of that, I was trying to come up with this name for these little glowing rings that I started making. And eventually my girlfriend at the time, she said, what about fly ride? And so we came up with that name fly ride in 2004, sitting out in front of her house. I later married her, she gave me babies. We've been together for 18 years now, married for 14 of them. It's like, it, that part of the, the process is crazy because she's watched as I've learned all of this stuff and failed over and over and over again throughout the last nearly 20 years together. And right after I finished up that car and I felt amazing, like I can do anything and people were helping and it was all awesome, I decided that I was gonna take it further and go from making lights to having some carbon fiber parts made. So we were doing like custom lights, carbon fiber front ends and hoods and fenders, all that crazy stuff. Very much like it just brings me back thinking about it to like that Fly One GTR that was here. Fly One Motorsports is all those fenders, hoods, bumpers, all that, all done in carbon. Like that hits that spot in my heart where I'm like, ooh, the early fly ride days, it was super dope. But unfortunately for me, it also came with a lot of failure where I wasn't doing video of all of that stuff and teaching anybody. I was just trying to push it out there and take on way too many things at once. And eventually it ended up falling apart because I stacked up too many projects right next to each other. And so when one of those things fell apart, it all came tumbling down. And at this point, there was still no YouTube, there was no Facebook, there was none of that. And so I had early failure, honestly, before social media really came around heavy, it was just the car forums. As I talk about failure, I want you to know, it's pretty scary when you put yourself out there and you screw up because people can come at you pretty hard. So right around the end of 2008, I was, I was almost burnt out to the point where I just wanted to quit fly ride and just leave it all behind me. I paid off a bunch of old debts and I just, I had a fresh baby boy. I was 24 years old and I really was just thinking like, I, I don't know if I have it in me to keep going with all this stuff. I was selling all these angel eyes back in the day and grinding away, making all these parts by hand. I was making videos back then and putting them, burning on, on little CDs and sending them off with the angel eye kits. And I was making tutorial videos and it, it was just, it was to the point where I had really thought about like maybe I need to just stop, just quit. It was just getting me into trouble. I just couldn't keep up even back then. And so about nine months after I had pretty much stopped and more or less closed down the business, it felt like I was just rotting away and I was freaking out because I wasn't making these videos and teaching people about car stuff. I don't know why I didn't realize that that's what I was so into even back then, but I was just finding myself like going crazy because I wasn't running fly ride. And I ended up joining forces with another company that I knew from my early days in fly ride. So at the end of 2008, I finally left the family business, which I knew was gonna have some consequences in it because they own my house, all of that. <laughs> 
and, uh, and I went full time doing automotive stuff. So over the course of the next about year and a half, I was doing nonstop photography, video, learning about car stuff, teaching the customers about that, building the website, like just going after it. And it was right then when I actually started doing YouTube for the very first time. I had started it in 2006, but I really started posting videos on there at about that point, like 2010, 2011. That was probably the first time that I realized I need to just have my own thing going. And so I left and I started doing Flyride full-time in 2011. Now this is basically when YouTube, when I started doing YouTube and I didn't even know why. So this is where I'm at zero subscribers. I don't have anything going on right now with the channel. I don't even know why I'm making the video, but I have my suspicion that it was just to show off. <laughs> I think I knew how to do something pretty well. I learned some little tips and tricks and I knew the Hyundai Genesis community because I was always posting on the forums with the previous business. So I decided I could just show them how to do some of this stuff by making them a, like a 30 minute how-to video of opening those headlights. But I had to figure out how to get them to the point where they could even install these angel eye rings way back then. And like the tech in 2011 was terrible, but it was so much better than the angel eyes that I used to make years beforehand. And I just needed these dudes to understand how they can open up the lights. So I posted up this video and after that I posted another one and then another one and I was making these YouTube videos kind of the way that you're supposed to do it but I didn't really have any clear vision as to why I was doing it. I just liked making videos and I figured that it showed off the service that I was doing and it was like a cool way to advertise what I could do. I wasn't focused at all at that point in the early days on the end user getting any value on it. I was just promoting myself. Like, look at me, look how smart I am, look at the things that I can do, give me money and I'll, I'll build you lights. That was kind of the idea behind it. And keep in mind, this is in early days in YouTube, so having a video go like crazy and getting a ton of views, it wasn't something that like, people were making a bunch of money and talking about it back then. So now we're in 2011 and I'm on YouTube. Here's the power of YouTube right here, this is crazy. I, I'm looking back now and I just watched a bunch of old videos and I realized like, wow, this is where the opportunity came from. So I am no longer working with anybody else. I'm working from my own garage in my home in Fontana, California, and I'm just barely getting going. And I just started filming all these little projects that would teach people things. I was laughing a second ago telling Jonathan about how I was plasti dipping the LED bulbs because back in the day, you couldn't even get a black switchback LED bulb. If you got an LED bulb, it had this ugly white circuit board and all that. And I came up with a genius idea of spray painting it with Plasti Dip. And I learned later that that was actually messing up the circuits and things were probably overheating because of that. But they sure looked cool before they did that. And so I was making the YouTube content and I remember I was out of town, I was in Las Vegas. I get a message from a guy, an email, and he says that he works at Hyundai. So I'm assuming he works as like a repair guy or something like that, one of the techs at a Hyundai dealership and uh, maybe he's looking to get his own cool Genesis coupe lights done. And so I emailed back and it turns out that the guy that hit me up was actually the, the head of a department in the Irvine Design Center for Hyundai. So he wasn't hitting me up from like a dealership, he was hitting me up from corporate. And that kind of blew my mind because he was reaching out, obviously he'd seen a couple videos, he'd heard my name mentioned to him from somebody else, and he reached out because they wanted me to be part of a custom build for their SEMA car that they were building for the president of Hyundai. This is in 2011, and I'm taking video and showing people how to build lights for Genesis Coupes, and I'm building them. It's like I'm doing the same thing now. Cool stuff happened. I got to work with a big company, and they were a client, and they were happy, and the president of Hyundai liked the Hurricane SC, is what it was called, a supercharged Genesis Coupe back then custom fly rate headlights and taillights, cool story. And then I lost my house. <laughs> so the reality was when I left my family's company and they owned my house and the company was in a position where they needed the money from that house, I just lost it. It was just whoop, right from underneath me. And I ended up needing to move back in with mom and dad after living by myself and my wife for seven years. I was doing my thing full time and all of a sudden, as I'm making videos and doing all of that, I find myself living in the room above the garage at my parents' place. 
And that was like such a humbling experience. I had a two year old, I had a beautiful wife. So now if you figure 2012, 2013, I'm living with mom and dad, I'm making lights full time. I've got a little crew of buddies that are working with me. I had a badass photographer at the time named Jesse. I had a guy that was doing video for me named Ollie. And those two guys were crazy talented back in the day. It absolutely trips me out to think that I didn't continue working with them after I ended up moving away and buying my house. So I got to finally break into something new in 2013, which was working on Nissan GTRs. And right at the very end of my stay with my parents, I worked on a GTR that was coined Radzilla. And I posted up a video right after I got into my new place. And that video on YouTube got over a million views just because of this four minute annoying dubstep background music. It was like over the top, everything that you could possibly do, stuffing lights in every little corner of the car. It was obnoxious how much work I did on that car, but people liked it, people hated it, people were commenting on it, it was absolutely nuts. And that was for the very first time when I was invited into the YouTube partner program where they actually pay you for the ads that were posted up on that video. I didn't even know that I was invited in and actually they sent that check to my old address in Fontana long after I didn't live there anymore. And I didn't know, but I had made about 800 bucks on YouTube. It took me years later when I found out that the state had some check from Google with my name on it for over 800 bucks because all these low life companies hit you up and they're like, hey, we have this thing that we found out and we could get 10% of the, the money, but we'll get you this thing. It's very difficult to do. Dude, I wrote a letter they sent me 800 bucks, it was dope. So that was, that was my first money made with YouTube and it took me from 2014, 15, sometime around there of me making videos and not really knowing why I was doing it. I still think I was just kind of showing off long before I hit 10,000 subscribers. I'm not, I'm, I'm not even sure what my old videos were about. Some of them were how to, some of them were just showing off and I was just doing it. I had no idea why, but I liked making videos. And I think that overall it was a great way to meet new customers. And so I just kept it up. So after I had finished the work for Hyundai, I'm living with mom and dad. I'm making dope videos with Ollie and all this cool photography with Jesse. And I've got this crew of guys going to all the Genesis Coop meets and just, I don't know, it was just this cool little atmosphere that was all going on. And I had only been working full time doing my own business, doing fly ride. And keep in mind, a lot of that was out of mom and dad's garage. I had like a one bay garage that I got half of. And so I was running my little workshop out of there. And it was about a two year period where I was just trying to grind through and build lights and sell them and just take on all these crazy projects and learn like crazy. That's the time that I was going and hitting up banks and being like, hey, what do I gotta do to get a home loan? And like trying to show them income and they were like, where's your W-2s? I'm like, I don't have a W-2, bro. I just build headlights in my parents' garage. Like, can I buy a house? I can't even tell you how crazy the story is and I'm not gonna get into it here because that's a 45 minute speech all on its own. But it was this miracle slash impossible situation where I had great help from an amazing broker realtor person that was out by me and she just helped me make the moves that I needed to make and I ended up being able to buy my first home in 2013 and I'll, after almost a year of fighting to get this place we finally got the keys in August of 2013 and I was running fly ride full time for myself out of my own house in my own little 20 by 20 garage it was it was like a dream come true I got to do what I love full time and just learn every day and take on new projects. I was doing the GTR stuff, so it was it was a pretty amazing transition for me to finally be on my own and not really having any safety net. There was nobody to catch me if I fell. So those were the days that it trips me out that I was still making YouTube videos and I was still pumping them out, even though I didn't really know why. So as things turned out, I'm doing a bunch of GTR lights, I'm just, I'm trying to make videos to get more customers, do more GTRs, and I got a really cool opportunity to work with R1 Concepts. And Martin, that owns R1, had reached out and he had said that, hey, we've got these brand new lights, the lightning bolt style headlights for the Nissan GTR. It's the new style that hasn't come out yet. Can you modify them? 
this is gonna be cool. Like I'm gonna get to do this crazy thing that no one's ever done before. And I decide that I wanna start doing cool stuff with these lights. This is crazy what happens next because the very, very first GTR project that I ever took on, I painted all this stuff, I thought it looked cool, and then I burned out the LED right before SEMA. I accidentally connected it to power when I shouldn't have, and it went poof. I was devastated. And I'm thinking, what am I gonna do? I have this project for R1, it's gonna be on a SEMA car, it's supposed to be amazing, and now it doesn't even work. I'm making these YouTube videos showing this process and, and then I burn out the part. What I ended up having to do was get somebody to make a replacement for that and send it off and get it rushed over just in time for SEMA. So we got it in the lights, everything was cool. We did this amazing photo shoot at SEMA with a big wall of fire behind it from Ryan, who's this amazing photographer, Hyperpower on Instagram. What up, Ryan? You're the man. <laughs> so that was, that was an amazing trip that I got to take to SEMA do this like underground, like out in the middle of nowhere shoot with R34s and crazy GTRs. It was like, it was the craziest experience ever. And I get more people that want me to do GTR lights for them. I make it more YouTube videos about GTRs. Then a company comes out that has a really cool sequencer. Cause up until then I was making my own sequencers. There was no way to make it work with the GTR until a company called The Lighting Firm came out and they started making a part that would work on 12 volts and I could connect it. And I made the very first sequential lightning bolt headlights for the GTR. This is now 2015. What I didn't know was that when you paint some of the parts in there, they get lens burn, the parts will melt. I did a bunch of sets of lights. I thought that I was the man, I was putting out all these cool GTR projects. And then they started coming back and I was getting People saying, yeah, the lights are melting. You owe me $3,000 headlights, but I want a refund on the other stuff. And it was like, it started to spiral. 2015 was insane. The lights that I had made to replace the ones that burned out, the upgrade parts that I thought were so dope, started blowing up inside of people's lights. Things were lighting on fire. Like it was, it was the scariest time ever. 2015 kicked me in the nuts harder than I've ever been kicked in my life. And it honestly, probably should have failed right then. Like I, I should have been able to like close shop and just move, move on to the next thing. But for some reason, I kept making YouTube videos. I found out about the, a lot of like the online business world that I didn't even know existed. I found a book that I started reading crazy that was called The Miracle Morning. And it was kind of a life changer because all of a sudden I started realizing that if I just woke up super early and would put an hour in, and I would just kind of visualize the things that I wanted to do and think about them and plan them out and get all this stuff in front of me and really, really start thinking heavy about what I wanted to happen, that could make that stuff real. So in 2015, my whole world started to change. I learned about online business. I learned about things like email automations and all this stuff that even right now, currently at 50K and blah, 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 I'm still not using to the extent that I could to help more people to reach out and actually make an impact on way more people than just like one dude that flips me a bunch of money and I do his lights and then I finish up and I do another guy and it's just like one by one by one as opposed to just like exponentially reaching out using things like online video to work 24 seven, 365 to help a ton of people. I didn't really think about that in 2015. I was thinking, how the heck am I gonna do this? What does my future look like? It's not sustainable, this thing that I'm doing. The game is not, it's like rigged. It's like, it's against you because if parts fail that you didn't make. I was really, really tripping out, looking around and thinking like, I don't see how the heck I could possibly do more than where I'm at. All I can do is more expensive cars and charge more money. And I did that and I raised the prices. I kept hearing that I needed to distance myself from the customer and not be so accessible and hire a virtual assistant, somebody in India that would answer the phones and do all that stuff. And I did all these things. I tried all these online tactics. It just didn't feel right. I didn't have my own community. I wasn't talking with any of the people that were following on YouTube. I don't know, I didn't feel like I was making an impact at all. And financially, I had just been, like I said, kicked in the ball so many times. I didn't know how much more I could take. And so I ended up going to a conference. It was really amazing. It was really kind of life-changing. And one of the speakers there was Gary Vee. The very first thing that he says 
is all of these people that are gonna tell you a bunch of crap about how you can say that you're gonna you're gonna change the world and all all that you have to do is charge double the amount and say that hey for every one of these things that you buy we'll send off this jacket to an Eskimo or whatever like he he basically put everybody on blast right off the bat and was kind of like mic drop f you I'm out he dropped the craziest amount of f bombs ever and he was savage in those days Gary was like. Whew. Those were the hustle days where that message was being put out hardcore and it hit me good. And it also, one of his things was that he'd say he'd suffocate your bull. <laughs> so if like you want to do the whole tactic of like charge double and then say you're going to do some good cause, he's like, I'm okay with you making money. Just don't pretend that you're making a big impact or tricking people or doing it or whatever. I tripped out when I saw that because then I listened to a bunch of other people talk after that. And I got to be honest, like, the early days of online business were super easy to just be a snake oil salesman and I don't know, to do things shady. So it really hit me when Gary cut right through all of that stuff and he's like, do the right thing. The right thing is always the right thing. Tell the truth, post your truth, talk about what you're going through. Later on, he started talking about document, over create, don't be fancy, just show what you're actually doing. And that's where I'm at now, right? That's exactly how and why I do that because the stuff that I picked up from Gary in 2015. I'd come home, I was tripped out. I had customers that I was having problems with, things that were not going well, but I reached out to them and I just said, hey man, I'm pumped about what's coming next. This is, this is what's wrong, this is what's right. I'm gonna get all this stuff together. I hired a new guy, he starts working for me. I'm training him, like things are good. But they weren't, they weren't great. That was just struggling. I was barely able to afford this new guy that started working for me and barely able to just go a little bit more than I had been doing. As 2016 rolls around, I'm just getting used to for the first time having somebody that's working with me 40 hours a week that's doing a bunch of this work and it takes a while to get into the rhythm of doing things differently because now you're training somebody. It actually takes more time away from you getting things done to train somebody new to do something not as well as you can do, right? So at the end of the day, you're paying more money, you're making less product, you're making less moment, I don't know. It's just tough, like it's crazy. That This is not about training employees or anything, but it is about the industry being ridiculously tough to figure out. Just having somebody doing the work does not mean that now you can scale that business and just make a whole bunch of headlights, like a little headlight factory. That's not a thing. If it doesn't hurt you when things go wrong, you don't learn. So if you have an employee and it doesn't hurt him every time he screws up, it doesn't cost him money, then he's not ever gonna learn and be as good as he could be, right? So I learned a lot of these things over the course of time. Later on in 2016, I was approached about doing this whole thing with YouTube and hey, that guy's a big YouTube influencer and I'm like, What's a YouTube influencer? Like, isn't YouTube just where you host your videos? Like, what are you talking about? I found out in 2016, towards the end of the year, right after I found out that my wife was pregnant with our second kid, and I'm kind of freaking out. Like, dude, I don't even know how I'm gonna keep going as I am. Now I got another kid coming. Oh my God, like, what's gonna happen? And these two dudes roll up and they show me that their companies are so dope and we should do this thing together and this collab should happen and this guy's a big influencer on YouTube. And for the very first time, I think in business, I got really envious of how other people had it over what I had. And I should have been extremely grateful because I've been in this beautiful home for three years, funded by me building lights and I wanted more and I wanted to change things and I'm working out of the garage every day out of my house like I just I had this dream of doing the fancy shop thing and these guys were dangling it in front of me and I, I thought it was gonna be an amazing thing and it turned out that that whole plan completely just fizzled and died like pretty abruptly it, it wasn't gonna be a possibility it wasn't gonna be a good thing for me and so it put me in a weird place where I was like I should be making these videos like this guy is and I started trying it and filming and talking to the camera. For the first time, I got in front of the camera. And I think it was more of the old school of me kind of showing off the stuff that I was building. And you know, I still didn't have a big following at all. I'm still 6,000 subscribers, something like that, which is awesome, but I didn't even know how I got that. So growing that wasn't gonna happen. So as time went on, I start just more and more getting in front of the camera, more and more getting used to kind of just talking and, and knowing what I'm gonna say ahead of time and 
winging it, just spitting at the camera, whatever. And finally the time came where another opportunity was presented to where I was gonna be able to go in with one of those two guys and do the shop thing and move out of my own you know, garage and finally do it big. And it was gonna be this big, amazing thing. And I really put so much faith into the overall group of people gonna be something that just lifted me up, just naturally brought me up with it. Here's a big tip. Don't ever think that being around other people is gonna elevate you or that riding coattails is a good thing or anything like that. If you don't lift yourself up, no one's gonna do it for you. And that was a tough lesson for me, especially taking advice about somebody who ran a different type of business than I did. As I learned, like, I can't take what works for one industry and make it work for my industry because my industry has so many little weird things involved. And if I'm not constantly evaluating what works and doesn't work, it's not gonna be a good thing for me. You can't just copy other people. If that's any advice that I can give you is don't look at one person's success and say, if I just do what they do, it's gonna work for me because that's not the truth. The reality is when I was meeting all these guys like TJ Hunt and Dustin Williams and doing the jobs, the stuff, working side by side with premium, it didn't really change anything for me, for my channel. My channel didn't hit 10,000 subscribers until September of 2017. I remember being at TJ's place after working with him for maybe almost a year at that point. And it was this point where I just started trying to gain some momentum and I thought that collaborations were, was just gonna make it happen for me. I was just gonna do a video with this famous dude and all his subscribers were gonna be like, dude, Chris, he builds custom lights. All that happened was more people hit me up to do their custom lights. Then I started bringing on more employees and it just ate me alive. I didn't have the money to keep up with it. I wasn't, I wasn't bringing in enough already to even sustain making lights myself and paying for crazy bills that I had never seen before and taking on way more than I was able to handle. So the road from 10,000 subscribers to 20,000 subscribers was a long, grueling one. It was pretty painful, actually. It was probably one of the coolest times for me because of going through the dirt and just just grinding through and honestly just sticking with it and refusing to just crumble that I was even able to go from the whole 10K to 20K thing on YouTube. And it had very little to do with YouTube. It had to do with how much I spread myself thin in order to do that. But the actual business side of things, it was like I was paying way too much money to have help. I was paying too much money to have overhead. I was driving crazy hours to get to my own place of business, which didn't make sense. And I was having a very rough time with my family because of all of that. So if you figure, my wife was used to me being five seconds from the bed. Like I wake up, I walk out into the garage, I'm at work, right? Honey, I need you. Daddy, I need you. And I was there. And that had its own problems, but not nearly as many problems of thousands and thousands of dollars, never being home, sitting in traffic for 10 plus hours a week, 40 hours a month, I'm sitting in traffic. A long kind of sketchy drive in Southern California. That was a bad thing for me for eight months. And so, the time that it took for me to get into my own shop to being absolutely miserable was eight months. And in that time, I did not grow the channel hardly at all. I think maybe two, 3,000 subscribers came in in that time, even working with these big famous dudes. And in that time, just the guys that I was working with were pumping out videos, doing amazing, just absolutely crushing it, focusing on growth. And it was a good thing for them. It just wasn't a good thing for me and I had to go. So at the end of 2000, 17, I was barely eking over that 10K mark and I, I wasn't able to continue doing what I was doing. So I started looking for a shop much closer to my house and right around December, I moved into my very first personal shop. It was just me and it wasn't even a shop. There was no bay door. I couldn't even pull cars in there. And for six months, I had my own shop and 2018 was kind of when I started taking YouTube seriously. I'd finally bought a new camera. I bought a Canon 70D and I was shooting with all kinds of bad stuff. I didn't have a good mic. I always had, all the videos were yellow. I bought a, a lens that just took the whole room and, and made it visible, but 
it made my face look all weird. I don't know. And it didn't matter because I was doing it. I was going after it. Honestly, one of the videos was so dope. I'm actually going to link it up. Left shoulder. It's right up there. Hit that thing if you want to learn how to cut open these WRX taillights. I have no idea why I've never done anything to promote that video. It's a really good one. You should go watch it. Anyway, and I, I figured something out early on and I didn't even know that I was doing it at the time, but I figured that if I could just film some videos, set the camera up and just blast out a whole bunch of content and then chop it up and call that like four different videos and name it different things and making it specific about what was shown in just those little parts of that video that I could batch edit a bunch of stuff together. And when I look back now, those videos did great. And a lot of the other videos did terrible and they had no planning. And I wasn't, I wasn't learning much about YouTube and how all this stuff works. So of all the videos that I shot in my own little shop back then, it was able to bump me up about another 5K. I got into here. So it was September, 2017, I hit 10K all the way up until December of the following year to hit 20K. And I hit 20K here. Like I remember we just moved in here at this spot and I had this beautiful place to film. And I, I mean, I could control the light. Everything is great. I can pull in a car. I realized that this place should not be a place where I bring in a bunch of cars to work on. This should be a place that's a studio, that's a business for making video. That's what the business needs to be at this point moving forward. So I made the decision back then that I was gonna do everything that I could to actually start pumping all my effort into the videos. And for the very first time, I decided to go all in on making the online courses. And so that actually started at about the same time that I moved in here. We moved in here in May and about in May was when I brought in my first guys, the OGs of Lightsman. So everything that comes next was very much based on the fact that I wanted to serve those dudes and make videos for them. And it was hard. It was crazy. I was setting up a new shop. I had to cut out walls. We had to do all this crazy stuff. And shortly after that, I ended up getting pretty messed up, having to get surgery. My guy that had been with me for almost three years left the company and I was finally able to really focus on just making videos and having somebody new that could do, just serve the, serve the customers that were hitting us up better. And that period of time was crazy because in all of that transition from being at the old place to being at the new place, I had kind of like lost my way with making the videos and what was gonna be the most beneficial. It's been absolutely crazy watching the growth. And if you are trying to grow your own thing or you're kind of wanting to, to know what it would look like, if you were just fumbling your way through it and not really trying, not being specifically like going after it to grow a community, to grow a, a following on something like YouTube where it, I could tell you this, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. It, making the online courses are only even possible because of what I've learned on YouTube, but it's been crazy. I even looking eight years ago, I was doing the same kind of videos I am now, and yet I still would say, growing the actual subscriber list and getting into contact and, and making an impact whatsoever, however little I am or big I am, whatever, it's hard, it's crazy hard. And it doesn't mean that things are going well in the background with money or anything like that. It's just a grind, right? So check out these numbers. This is the reality behind it. So it took me from 2011 is when I actually started posting specifically to show how to's and all that. So 2011 to 2017, we're talking six pretty packed years, lots and lots of videos, tons of them go out. I got 10,000 subscribers. That was the initial part of it. Realistically, I've had the account since 2006, but that's just me being truthful. 2011 to 2017, six years, I got 10,000 subscribers. And then from there, the next 14 months took a lot of effort, a lot more videos. I was even strategic about it, but at the end of 2018 in December is when we hit 20K. This is where it gets crazy. Back when I was making those batch edited videos, I put one together with a bunch of tips about how to open up the headlights and I showed up mistake I made and I did all that. And it sat for probably about two, three months where it had been maybe 2000 views, maybe 3000 views. And then all of a sudden at the end of last year, right around that point where I hit that, that 20 K and I was going after it and posting a bunch of videos and I was killing myself. I was hurting the business because I was trying to make a bunch of videos. All of a sudden, something happened in the algorithm. Right before Christmas, I remember I started looking down. I'm like, I'm getting 100 subscribers a day. 
and then 150 and then 200 and then 250 subscri subscribers a day are coming in and that video is just taking off. It jumped crazy high. It went like 200,000 views out of nowhere. And that one video made the difference of a few hundred bucks a month to my income, right? And then as time went on, it brought another video with it. And there was this sequential video, how to do the sequential stuff. And people really liked that. Both very long videos, very thoughtful, very much about you learning. And so I saw that and the thought that they both sat for almost 10 months before they went into YouTube suggested, it trips me out. Like YouTube can decide on a dime that your videos are gonna get pushed out and that tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people are gonna see your content and they'll decide if they like it or not. And in my case, a lot of people did and so we doubled the size of the account in four months. So it was at 20K, then two months later it was at 30K, and then two months later it was at 40K, all right? And then those videos tapered off. From there I'm at April, I'm at 40K, feeling on fire and knowing that I've gotta finish up a lot of this stuff with the course, I dove into live streaming, got on Twitch, and just really started community building, and that was my focus, not growth. And so it actually took another six months. We went from April to October before I hit 50K. Very interesting how this whole thing works. And I talked to a guy the other day, um, actually yesterday, he was talking to me about wanting to start a YouTube channel and what he was, his expectations were. And I think that's where things get kind of dicey is, he was thinking that if he had 20,000 subscribers that he was gonna make a few thousand dollars a month on AdSense. You're not gonna get rich off of YouTube. It's a long, long game. For me, I can't in come anywhere near, I can't even pay my rent with what I make off of AdSense currently. It's only a few hundred bucks. So when I'm talking about these online courses and I'm talking about the LED products and all the things that I'm, I'm really putting out specifically because I know you guys love them and when you get them, you, you're into it. You know, you tell me the turn signals are amazing, the switchback bulbs, the license plate bulbs, the interior, all those things. I get awesome feedback and people tagging and posting pictures and I love that. And so I'm gonna be doing a lot of reposts of that stuff now coming up. And I can just tell you that it's because I wanna to continue to be able to do this. So the next 50K, I don't want it to take another year. I don't want it to take a few months. I wanna honestly, pack some crazy amazing videos in here that are gonna make the difference of doubling this channel again. And you know what, if that means that it's doing a good job for you guys, then that's what I'm all about. If I can go full time with the online courses and just pumping out tons of social media, I'm gonna do that on TikTok, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Facebook, everywhere that I can, because if it's making a difference and people are watching this stuff with their kids and they're doing cool projects and they're taking on projects that they would've never done before, if that's how the impact of this channel is moving forward, then I'm gonna double down again. I, and so many crazy things have happened with me and with the channel and things not going right that literally the business could end at any time. And I refuse to let it happen. I'm gonna fight through it. I'm gonna keep making videos. I'm gonna make things right with the guys that have had to wait for me. And when it's all said and done, I just hope that this stuff is gonna continuously bring value ongoing and live forever on the internet. And that's what the road to 50K looked like for me. So let me know, comment, are you still here? <laughs> because I did this on the last video that was super long and so many of you guys said, I'm still here. So comment below, let me know if you watched all the way up to this point, hit that like button for me, let me know that you're still here and that you are ready to hear what's coming next. This is the big announcement. We got a contest, boys and girls, it's gonna be cool. So next video, I'm gonna go over all the details, everything about this contest, what you have to do, I don't know, all the little things. And I want you to know that there's two companies that I really want to reach out and just say thank you for being at all interested in getting involved with the 50K giveaway with Flyride. That is Dress Up Bolts and Circuit Demon. Circuit Demon sent off some amazing parts. Uh, I don't even want to show you exactly what they look like, but we're going to be using them on Colette's RX-8 job and then we're going to be giving a set to you guys as well. And then we've also got some really amazing stuff from Dress Up Bolts. They've got some crazy titanium hardware that we're gonna get a gift card for you guys. It's gonna be a pretty cool thing. So if you wanna get involved with that, just stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and I'll see you guys on that announcement video coming up. Wow. Ramble. Ah. Uh. So hard.